sorry for the shaky cam, but this is just how it's going to go. So we're going to go over some real basics here. Uh, you can fast forward if you understand how a four stroke engine works, but I feel the need to cover this because I'm getting a lot of people reaching out to me installing a HyperSpark distributor or a sniper system. They go, I can't get it to run. And they say to me, I installed it at top dead center. And I say, which top dead center? And they, and I get the blank stare, you know, that you can see in a text message. Um, there are in fact, in a four stroke engine, two top dead centers. So we're talking specifically, although it's not any different on a small block Chevy or a big block Chevy or a Ford 200 or a 289, you know, the firing order is different, but that that's all. Okay. Now on the Ford 200, the firing order is 153624. Okay. Number one and number six right here. Okay. They're at top dead center at the same time. And when I say top dead center at the same time, it means both pistons follow each other. They are they they travel in pairs okay let's think of it that way there's all these pistons travel in pairs okay so one and six five and two and three and four they all travel in pairs okay this is a four-stroke engine this is how it works like i said this is very basic so if you don't understand that's you know a good thing to, to follow if you understand how a four-stroke engine works you can probably won't even have this problem but it's important to understand that your camshaft, which controls the valves up here, turns at half of the speed of the crankshaft, which is actually rotating these connecting rods down here that are moving the pistons, okay? Now I'm showing them all, this is this diagram is, is not exact. It's more important to understand the position of the valves, okay? We have our intake stroke, which we move down. Our valve intake valve closes. You'll notice both the intake and exhaust. By the way, this is intake and exhaust. Okay, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. I didn't label it, but you know, now you understand. Okay, intake moves down, it pulls in our charge, right? Air and fuel. We move over to compression stroke, we come up, we compress. Okay, we move over to our power stroke. Valves are still closed. They're both closed here, they're closed here. Power, but we're moving down. The arrow's pointing down. That's power, right? And then exhaust, our exhaust valve opens. Now, I'm showing all these at top dead center right now, okay? This is what the valves are gonna look like for the exhaust at top dead center. You're actually in what's called the overlap cycle. That means, and it's the only time that both the intake and the exhaust valve are slightly open because we're using the exhaust moving out this way to actually pull some of the intake in. It's called scavenging, okay? So that's why there actually is a little gap here and there is a little gap here. I don't show that completely closed and it's a terrible drawing, I'm sorry. Okay, so if you need to determine which cylinder you're on, top dead center, because the crank at number one and number six, top dead center, on the crank is gonna be number one or number six on our Ford 200. And this also goes for, for small block and big block Chevy, even though it's 18436572, you'll notice you split it in the middle. 1843 is the first four. One, sorry, 1843 is the first four, 6572 is the second four, okay? Same thing here, 153624, you split them in half. That's how we know we are uh, that's how we know where the middle of the firing order is because one eight one five three is one rotation of the crank, six two four is the second rotation of the crank. So here's what can happen if you're at top dead center, which is firing position. So that's actually power stroke. Okay, that's something that's important to know. That's right when we're getting ready to fire. Right, we've in we've intaked, we've compressed, we're ready for power. We're at top dead center. Okay, the same. The, the complementary cylinder, which say this is number one right here, okay? We're in power position, ready to fire, top dead center number one. It's got a charge, it's compressed. We're at number one. Number six, the complementary cylinder is actually an overlap right now. It is just finishing its exhaust cycle at that top dead center of number six, okay? The inverse happens when number six, say number six was in power, number one is gonna be an overlap. So what does all this mean? 
Well, when you're going to stab a distributor, you could be at top dead center number one or number six. So potentially you could be stabbing your distributor. Say this is number one and we're in the overlap cycle and it's at top dead center. You could be stabbing your distributor where it really should be in the power stroke, but you're not, you're in the exhaust stroke. It won't run like that. You're gonna be 180 degrees out on the distributor, but you're 360 crank degrees out. So remember, 153, that's one rotation. 624, that's the second rotation of the crank. It takes two crank rotations to make a complete cycle, which is one camshaft rotation or one distributor rotation because the distributor is run off of the cam, okay? I'm not doing a fantastic job of explaining this, but I just wanna go over those basics. I want, the, the important thing to remember here is that the crankshaft takes two rotations to complete a cycle because it is a four stroke engine, okay? So with that, this is you know just a little classroom session. Let's get under the hood and I'll give you the practical demonstration as I like to do. Uh, people are very visual and that's how I like to explain things. So we'll dive under the hood. Now, just to give you a quick visual of what it would look like on the balancer, because that's something that you can relate to and we'll show you when we look at the car. Uh, imagine that this, where this arrow is, is where that timing marker or notch or timing tape, whatever you have on our 206s, just a little notch, um, you know, but it goes for any balancer is going to have a timing marker on it. Um, some of the more fancy ones, like the one on my truck, it's actually got one every 90 degrees because it fires every 90 degrees. Now, remember being that this is an I-6, it's firing every 120 degrees because you only got six cylinders, not eight. So, uh, and I'll show you what a V8 looks like in a minute, but this is really related to 200 just because it's where I'm seeing the most issues. Um, one, five, three, six. So if we're at firing position number one, if I rotate this balancer one rotation, now I'm at number six. I rotate it one more time, I'm back at one. So this timing marker can be number six, or number one, because rotating this 360 degrees rotates my camshaft 180 degrees. Pretty easy concept. Camshaft runs at half the speed of the crank. So that's just a quick visual representation. Here's your V8, small block Chevy, big block Chevy, uh, Mopar firing order. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. And a lot of people know that. It happens to be one and six is because of the firing order. It happens to be one and six, same thing as a inline six Ford. Uh, happen to both be at the timing mark at the notch that's on the balancer. But you, so you could be at one or at six. If it depends, you just it's you got a 50-50 shot depending on where you landed it. Uh, and we'll go over ways to determine it now. If the distributor's in the car and it's right. Uh, you're going to know because the distributor is going to be pointing at the right plug wire. Um, but if your distributor is not in there, somebody put it in there wrong. Sometimes that happens. If, it, if it's not a running car or it wasn't run, it wasn't running or you couldn't get it running, it could be that the distributor is in wrong. So anyways, I just wanted to cover that real quick. Um, it gives you a little bit better visual representation. So now for the practical application in this evening's symposium, let's show you on this 200 where number one is, which is up front here, one through six, that's how they're numbered. Uh, you'll notice the firing order. If you take a look at where all the spark plug wires go, it's kind of hard to tell, but one, five, three, six, you see I got them labeled, two, four. So one right here uh, on these motors, the distributor travels clockwise, just as it does on a Chevy. Uh, on Fords, on uh, small and big block Fords, uh, any of the ones where the, the distributors run off the front, they're counterclockwise. So your firing order would travel that way, the wrong way versus the right way here. Um, so let's pop this uh, distributor cap off and we'll show you. I'm probably unlucky, unlucky not at top dead center and I'm not. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've rolled the motor to top dead center. Now I can tell you immediately I know it's top dead center number one because of where my rotor's pointed. So my rotor's right here. If you'll remember my number one spark plug wire was right about there when I had the cap on it, okay? Look at my timing marker. If you can get the camera in here for you to see it. There it is. Let's see if we can get it to focus, huh? There, now you can see it a little bit better. See, I'm at top dead center down there. That's zero on that marker. See where I'm pointed? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this real time so you guys can see it. Okay, I'm gonna roll this crank one time and this is just to prove to the skeptics out there that are, you know, this is again, this is for beginners. Okay, we're gonna roll this thing 360 degrees. Okay, and that rotor is gonna be pointing 180 from where it was. This is, isn't this fun? You get to uh, listen to the airplane go by and me ratcheting a motor around 360 degrees. We're getting close because I can tell by looking at the rotor. I just rolled past it actually, but it's close enough. See the yellow mark down there? It's hard to get it to focus. Come on. There we go. See, I went a little bit past, but it doesn't matter. It's close to top dead center. See where my rotor's pointed now? Maybe you guys want me to prove it to you. Maybe I'll back it up just a little bit here. There, that's pretty close to top dead center right there. We are now top dead center number six, okay? It's just like I said, you're uh, half the speed of your, of your crank is your cam and your distributor, okay? Because it's a four stroke engine. So I just want to prove that. I want to give you a practical, uh, you know, for, Anybody that's got experience on this, they're gonna they're they're gonna just choke on how basic this is. But you know what? I'm really surprised at how many people just don't know this. Um, so we are now at six. So here's the problem, and this is what people are doing. They're going, oh, I got a top dead center down there, and they go and they stab their new HEI or their DS2 or whatever because they're taking their load of crap out, you know, load of crap distributor and getting rid of their auto light or whatever. They stab it in as number one. So then your rotor's pointing that way. Well, guess what? You just uh, uh, you just put put it in 180 out, and it's never going to run like that because you're going to be firing number one in its overlap cycle, so it won't even make any noise. It's very unlikely that it'll even try and run. Um, so you know, it's just you make sure you check this. So the easiest way to do this is what I just showed you. Get it to top dead center with the old distributor to cap off of it. Know what plug wire it's pointed to. They don't need to be labeled or anything. You just look at, you know, look at it and make sure it's pointed at number one. Because the way the manual says it, number one and number six should be as I have it oriented here. In reality, in the world, it doesn't matter. You can have number one wherever you want it on the cap. It doesn't matter as long as the order is right. Um, so just val validate where it is. Easiest thing, just put it back the way that it was. If you're ambitious, try and do it like the manual says, like I've got it here. But the physical position of where it is doesn't matter as long as it's 153624 or on your Chevy 18436572 or your Ford, whatever the stupid firing order is for that. You know, um, you, you just make sure that that is right. It's not so critical where it's pointed. Okay, so... What do you do if you don't have a distributor in there? I'm not going to demonstrate that, um, but I will try and explain it um, because it, it would involve me pulling the valve cover off of this. And this, this thing tends to leak uh, if you don't replace the gasket, and I don't have one for it. Um, as this sits right now, I know I'm in number six firing position. Now, maybe I didn't know that. If I was to take this valve cover off and I look at the two rocker arms sitting right here for number one, uh, they're going to be tight. Whether you got a solid or a hydraulic roller cam, they're going to be noticeably tighter and they're not going to have much play in them or any at all, especially if it's a solid roller. 
as number six. Number six will be more loose right now because number six in, is in firing position. The valves aren't open at all. Remember what I explained earlier in the video when we were doing kind of classroom session. This is an overlap cycle right now. It is the only position that both valves are equally open at this point, is right at top dead center. Now, that's sort of true. You know, the, the camshaft's ground has got some advance in it and stuff, so that's not perfectly true. But for the purposes of this conversation, this both rockers will have some pressure on them where they're not going to feel near as loose as the opposite one. So again, number one and number six are the complementary cylinders here. So I would roll this around another 360 degrees to put me right back at number one. I do want to cover one more thing too while I'm shooting this segment. And this is in relation to the uh, HyperSpark distributor and uh, me doing multi-port fuel injection with full sequential port injection based on the HyperSpark. Um, and it's visually obvious. I wasn't sure if it would be. Um, I didn't even think about this until Holly told me about it. Uh, let's see if we can't zoom in here. See where the number one rotor is right here? Where the pointer is, right? That's, that's where, well, it's not the number one rotor. It's just the number one position, right? This is fixed on here. And the number one position uh, is going to line up with this tooth right here. Uh, you see how this tooth is narrower than the rest of the teeth? We can walk around, see if we can get the other ones in. The other ones are wider. That is how they index the number one position right there is by this one tooth being smaller. So that's how we know what the firing order is. Um, if these were all the same width, it would not function that way. You wouldn't be able to do full sequential, but it knows because every sixth pulse is shorter. So that's how you can do full sequential. You could do DIS with this direct ignition system. It can be done because this one tooth is smaller. So that's a big benefit of the HyperSpark distributor. So it's a little added bonus for you guys. I just wanted to visually show you that. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to see it, but it is, it's substantially smaller, about half the size of the other teeth. So that is how they index these without having to use a dual sync distributor. So anyways, I think that's probably gonna wrap this one up. Maybe I'll, uh, when I get to editing this at some point, I will uh, see something that I didn't think about, but I just wanted to go over uh, something that just seems to come up all the time. I probably get more private messages about this than anybody, or I'll see somebody who goes, I installed my HyperSpark on my sniper and I just can't get the darn thing to start. And and I will always ask the question, well, you installed it at top dead center. Yes. Which one? Huh? When I get that, huh? I know that people don't know. Um, so it kind of surprises me a little bit, but then again, you know, there are some basics. I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there that explain this, but, um, you know, I, I wanted to kind of dive into it specifically, at least for the group of people that, that tends to follow me. So anyways, we'll, uh, wrap this one up.